Welcome to another video where in this video, I'm going to be doing a complete and full mock test. In the three years of this channel, I didn't realize until the other day when I was going through the videos, I've never done a complete mock test. I've done questions separately, has perception separately, but I've never done a complete mock test. So today's the day where I do a complete mock test, just like what you guys will do when you go for your real test. So it's 50 questions, we've got 57 minutes. I'm still going to give you hints, tips and tricks along the way, time permitting. And then I will move on to the 14 videos and then we're going to see what my score is. Remember, if you are looking to take your fairy test and you are struggling and you want help and you don't mind being filmed, send me a message via email info at drivingfairyuk.com with some history and background to your studying even if you fail the fairy test on a regular basis and you are really struggling send me some um information why you're struggling what you what you like about the fairy test what you don't like about the fairy test this is ongoing training where your sessions will be filmed to go on youtube to inspire and motivate other students who may be struggling with their fairy test so i repeat if you're looking to get some help from me don't mind being filmed. Send me information at info at driving fairy UK. So get your pens, your papers ready. Play along with me with the 50 question mock test. Put it in the comment what score you got with this. Let's waste no more time. Let's get started. So with the questions, I would always, if you watch my videos, always read the question first. Look at any images if they're available and then go to your four options and always read all four options. I'm going to be taking my advice while I'm doing this and um, just to show you little hints, tips and tricks along the way. So first question, what should you do before you tow a trailer for the first time? Fit P plates to your trailer. No, nope. pass a special driving test. That's the pass a special driving test. You don't need a special driving test to tow a trailer. I'm almost going to click that one as well. Um, take professional training. That would be the safest option at the moment. Ask the DVLA to update your license. That doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, take more professional training to help you tow the trailer because it has different reference points for turning, basically. So that's what you're looking for. What must you do when you hitch a trailer to a towing vehicle? So the question, the key word, key words there. And what I call golden nuggets is what must you do? Switch off the reversing sense on the towing vehicle. That doesn't make sense. Make sure you can see the trail in the mirrors. Nope. Grease the tow bar. Sorry, that's my, uh, start again. That's my dyslexia kicking in. Grease the tow ball and hitch. No, fit a secondary coupling device. It's going to be this one. What? should you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy um when you overtake a cyclist give them plenty of space the most cyclists and horse riding ones is either stay behind slow down give them plenty of space along those lines so keep close as you pass no overtake very slowly doesn't make no sense if you're going to overtake why do it slowly sound your horn repeatedly no and allow extra room yeah it's always going to be like i said stay behind slow down or give them extra room this is for cyclist horse rider questions Right, there's a lot of information in this one. You are waiting to turn right, so you're turning right, out of a minor road. It's clear to the left, but a lorry's coming from the right. Why should you wait even if you have enough time to turn? Okay, the lorry might be slowing down. It should be slowing down if it's turning left, but that's not the reason why. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. Yeah, so motorbike cyclists overtaking the lorry may be hidden so wait for the lorry to commit to his turn so you've got a clear view of the road left and right so it's going to be that one at the moment but always read all four options just in case there's more information in the others the lorry could suddenly speed up no the load on the lorry might be unstable and again no why are these yellow lines painted across the road so they're talking about these yellow lines here these are called rumble strips if you didn't know, they're just painted slightly higher than the tarmac. So when your car drives over them, it rumbles. So if it's a smooth rumble, your speed's good. If it's a violent rumble, your speed's too fast. So it basically alerts you about your speed on approach to a hazard. That's what rumble strips are for. So we're looking for something along those lines. 
to help you choose the correct lane, no, to make you aware of your speed. That's what we just spoke about. But again, read all the others to help you keep the correct separation distance, no, to tell you the distance to the roundabout. And again, that's a no. You are waiting to turn right at the end of a road. So you're at the end of a road. So at a giveaway line, basically. What should you do if your view is obstructed by parked vehicles? Move quickly to where you can see. So you only block traffic from one side. Once you got quickly in the wording, that's going to be wrong anyway. For instance, it's not about quick. All the driving lessons, it's not about quick. Stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a clear view of the road. This sounds feasible at the moment. Stop and then move forward slowly, the key bit there, and carefully. Wait for pedestrians. Wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it is safe. Now, this has got safe in it, but you're waiting for a pedestrian to let you know. You have to take accountability. If a pedestrian telling you to go, then it doesn't mean say it's safe. But it has got keyword there, safe in it. But you can eliminate that one because you're waiting for someone else to tell you. Only you can make that decision. Turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use. And that's going to be a nice. It's this one here, safety factor. Your insurer will issue you with an insurance certificate. When must you produce this document for inspection? Now, the only time you need to produce your documents is if a um, police officer, law abiding officer, asks you. That's no other times you need to produce it, to be honest. Um, when buying or selling a vehicle, no. When making a sworn, which is statutory offer of notification, that's what it stands for, no. When a police officer asks you for it, yes. When your vehicle is having an MRT test, and again, no for that one. What is a cover note? A cover note is temporary insurance. That's what a cover note is. It's a temporary insurance. A document issued before you receive your MLT certificate, no. A document issued before you receive your driver's license, no. A document issued before you receive your registration documents, no. A document issued before you receive your insur insurance certificate answers yes. So let me just repeat. A cover note is temporary insurance. That's what you get first. So you can drive your car from A to B and then your insurance company will send the full documentation through the post or via email, depending on how you got your insurance in the first place. In which conditions will your overall stopping distance increase? So how basically how in what conditions will it take you longer to stop in simple terms in strong winds no in the rain as a possible that's double at night no in fog so it's going to be rain it's doubled in the rain and ice and snow is up to 10 times longer how should you use anti-lock brakes when you need to stop in an emergency anti-lock brakes is ab otherwise known as abs anti-lock brakes Basically, it's an onboard computer which just unlocks the wheels if it seems it's going to go into a skid and just reapplies it softly for you. That's what anti-lock brakes is. So it says an emergency. So you're looking for rapid and quickly, sorry, rapid and firmly. Normally in the ferry test, they use the word rapid. Rapid for the ferry test is quick. Um, brake normally, but grip the steering wheel tightly. You're braking normal. <laughs> braking normal. Let's do that again. You're braking normally, but grip the steering wheel tightly. It's an emergency. You're going to want to brake quicker than normal. Apply the parking brake. Once you've got part, apply the parking brake. The answer is going to be no to that one because you never use a handbrake while the car is moving. Keep pumping the full brake. And again, that's no. And brake promptly and firmly. So they've got promptly in here. So they use the words rapid and promptly as another word for quick. So in this case, it's prom promptly and firmly until you have stopped. So it's going to be this option. What's the main cause of skidding? Right, skidding is when the wheels lock no longer turn. So 99%, 99.9% of skids is driver error. The driver just left it late, regardless of what the weather conditions are. And the other 0.1% is road surface, loose sand, gravel, that type of thing. So it's either going to be the main cause of skidding is either driver error or road surface. And they can use either of those options on the rule test. So the road, no. Vehicle, no. The weather, no. The driver, yes. So in this case, it's going to be the driver. The driver left it late. That's the main cause of skidding. You're, you are driving at night on an unlit road. 
what should you do if you're falling in love with a vehicle? Right, if you're falling in love with a vehicle at night, it's unlit, you want to be using dipped headlights. Um, use full beam headlights, no, because you're falling in love with a vehicle. Full beam will make them dazzled. In other words, blinding them. Use dipped headlights, yes. Switch off your headlights, no, because you're driving in the dark then. And flash your headlights again, no. You are traveling at the legal speed limit. What should you do if a vehicle behind approaches quickly, flashing his headlights? Touch the brake sharply to show your brake lights. Touch the brake sharply to show your brake lights, no. Accelerate to make a gap behind you again, no. Allow the vehicle to overtake, yes. It could be unmarked police car. That's the reason why you want to allow the vehicle to overtake. And maintain your speed to prevent the vehicle from overtaking. Again, if you're preventing the vehicle from overtaking, it can't be safe. So it's that one. What type of emergency vehicles is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Now, if you have not seen my videos with the flashing beacon, um, green is your doctor's cars. Yellow beacon or amber beacons is slow moving and blues emergency services. So in this case, they're asking for the green. We're looking for doctor's cars. Fire engine, no. Road gritter, no. Doctor's cars, yes. And ambulance, no. You are driving at night. What do you do if you're dazzled by headlights coming towards you? Now, dazzled means being blinded temporarily. That's what dazzled means for the fairy tales. So pull down your sun visor. No, because it's nighttime. Slow down or stop. Yes, until your eyesight comes back. Shade your eyes with your hands. No. Flash your main beam headlights. Again, no. Why would you fit chains to your wheels? <laughs> right, this question comes up quite a bit. I'm not understanding why they still ask this question in the UK because we don't get enough snow. It's just to get a better grip. This is more for your Canadians and Americans who get their six inches, eight inches of snow. Um, to help prevent wear to tyres, to the tyres, no. To help prevent skidding deep snow, yes. Like I said, we don't really get deep snow for that to happen. Um, to help prevent damage to the road surface, no. To help prevent brakes locking, no. What should you do when you're overtaking, when you are overtaking at night? What should you do when you are overtaking at night? Go past slowly so that you can react to unseen hazards. The whole point of overtaking is to make progress. So there's no point overtaking slowly. So that makes no sense. Sound your horn. That makes no sense. Warning of your presence, especially sounding your horn twice. So no. Beware of bends in the road. Yeah, if you're going to overtake, you want to be aware of the bends because you shouldn't be overtaking on the bend. Wait until a bend so that you can see oncoming headlights. Wait until a bend. No, again, that's not safe at all. Why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? Right, to stop draining the battery, no. To prevent dazzling drivers behind, it's possible because fog lights are intense. Hence why you turn them on when it's foggy so you could be seen clearer through, through fog. To allow your headlights to work, no. To stop the engine losing power, again, no. Which signs, which sign shows that a tanker is carrying dangerous goods? So always look at the images and it's going to be this one. So it's got a picture of a flame on it, dangerous goods. Um, it's going to be that one. So we're looking at B. There's been a collision. How can you help a driver who's suffering from shock? Offer them a cigarette? No. Give them a drink? No. Reassure them confidently? Yes. Reassure them means talking to them, make sure that they know that someone's there for them, but don't use words like they're going to be fine, they're going to be okay, because you shouldn't use terms like that. But it's just talking to them, make sure they know that someone's there, don't leave them on their own, and ask who caused the incident, which is irrelevant. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire while you're driving through a tunnel? Now, when this question comes up in the classroom, most people's port get out, which is not what they're looking for. They want you to keep driving. A car fire starts very small. It takes a long time to spread. They want you to come out the other side of the tunnel to open space so one, the fire engine can get to you and two, you're not bringing other people into danger. So that's the reasons why they want you to keep driving them side. Now, because... The, again, this is going about back about six to eight months. They have made it quite clear either in the question 
odd answer that your car is still drivable. So they will make it quite clear your car is still drivable. And obviously that's the answer you want to be going for. So let me just read the question again. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire while you're driving through a tunnel? Drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. So there you go straight away. If it's safe to do so, that means your car is still drivable. There's no chance of you catching fire at this point in time. So that's what we're looking for. But still read the others just in case. Leave it where it is with the engine running. No. Pull up, then walk to emergency telephone. No. Park it away from the carriageway. Remember, you're in the tunnel at this point, so the answer is no. You're on a smart motorway. Smart motorway is a motorway with digital information, hence why you got the 50. So smart motorways got digital information where they can change the signage at any time while you are driving. What does it mean when a mandatory speed limit is displayed above the hard shoulder? This means you can use a hard shoulder. They're giving you permission to use it because the speed has dropped and they check the cameras and there's nobody in the hard shoulder or on the hard shoulder at this point in time as in broken down. The hard shoulder can be used as a running lane. That's what it's called when you can use it. It's called a running lane. So it's that one, but still read all the other options just in case. You can park on the hard shoulder if you feel tired. No, you can never do that regardless. Um, you can pull up in this lane to answer a mobile phone. You know you shouldn't be doing that and you shouldn't travel in this lane. you got the 50 over the hard shoulder so you can travel in this lane. If it was an X of the hard shoulder, it would be this option. Which vehicle should use the left-hand lane on the three-lane motorway? And the key word there's which vehicles is every vehicle unless you're overtaking. Everybody should be staying left. I know you don't see them doing it, but everybody should be staying left unless you are overtaking. Any vehicle that isn't over, any vehicle that isn't overtaking, first one out. Slow vehicles only, no. Large vehicles only, no. Emergency vehicles only, no. You're driving on a motorway and have to slow down suddenly due to a hazard ahead. How can you warn drivers behind of a hazard? Sound your horn, no. Nope. That doesn't warn of a hazard that warns that you're there. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Again, if you read the question carefully, you're slowing down suddenly because of a hazard. So you've got the word hazard there. And how can you warn drivers behind of the hazard? And you've got hazard in the answer. It doesn't always work, but there's a link there. So it's a possible. So I'm going to click that. Flash your headlights again. No. And switch on headlights and again no it's going to be this one because there's clues or golden nuggets in the question and golden nuggets in the answer you're driving on a road that has a cycle lane what does it mean if the line is marked by a broken white line right they're talking about this line here it's broken it means you can go in it if it's unavoidable it's not solid if it was solid you couldn't go in there but this one's broken so you can go in there if it's unavoidable because the driving test is about making progress. So cyclists can travel in both directions of that lane. No, there's a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using, using the lane. No, you shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. There you go. That's one. The lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. And again, answer no. You are going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? Swing out to the right just before turning. That's what lorries do because their reference point is different from yours. Keep well to the left of the road. That's what you should be doing. Um, keep in the middle of the road. That'd be turning right, left of center. Keep just left of the middle of the road. Keep just left of the middle. No, keep well to the left, i.e. a meter from the curve for those of you taking driving lessons. You're driving at night with your headlights on main beam. A vehicle is overtaking you. When should you dip your headlights? Only if a, only if the other driver dips their headlights. No. As soon as the vehicle passes you, yes. So what you want to do, as soon as the vehicle overtakes you, turn your main beam or something up to blind them. And then obviously you can just use their lights at the back of their car to guide you. Sometime after the vehicle has passed, no, before the vehicle starts to pass you. If you turn it off before the vehicle passes, technically you're driving in the dark. That's why you've got the main beam on. So yeah, as soon as the vehicle passes you, 
then you can turn your main beam off um, and then use the back of their lights to guide you. How far are you allowed to reverse? And you're not allowed to reverse no further than necessary. Um, as far as it takes to reverse around the corner, no, no more than a car's length. There's different car lengths that doesn't tally. The length of a residential street, no, and residential streets are different lengths, so that again doesn't tally, and no further than is necessary. You can only reverse back the required distance that is necessary. You're traveling on a narrow section of a road, so the road is narrow. What should you do if a horse rider head is riding the center of the lane? Sound your horn to alert them to your presence. No, you're going to spook the horse. Stay behind and allow them to ride in this position. That sounds the safest at the moment. Move across to the right and try to ease past them. It's a narrow section of the road, so I wouldn't be doing that. Get up close behind to encourage them to move aside. And again, no, because um, you can spook the horse. It's going to be stay behind and allow them to ride in this position. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? By pointing to the children waiting to cross, no. By displaying a stop sign, yes. By giving you an arm signal. Um, that could be a possible because they they have the stop sign that can give an arm signal as well. Um, which be a flat palm by displaying a red light. So eliminate these two. I will go with the sign because it's more visible. Yeah, I'll go with it. I'm going to flag that, to be honest. I'll come back to it. Because they could give you an arm signal and they can give you a stop sign. I'll flag that, come back to it when I've got more time. Why do motorcyclists often look over their right shoulder just before turning right? To check for traffic in their blind era, that's a big possibility. Motorcycles don't have mirrors. Some do. Um, to listen for traffic behind them, there's going to be a no to help. It helps them balance as they turn. No, check their blind area. Um, as for them, it's their lifesaver checks. That's what it's called for cyclists, their lifesaver checks. You want to turn right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by a parked vehicle? So this means you can't see. For those of you taking driving lessons, peep and creep is what you do in this situation. But let's see what answers they're giving us for the theory test. Sound your horn and pull out. That doesn't make sense. Sound your horn and pull out if there's no reply. No. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. That's a possible peep and creep. Um, move out quickly. Well, it's got quickly in there. Be, be prepared to stop. Answers no. Stop, get out and look along the main road. Again, no for that one. Right, this, let me read the question first. Um, what does it mean if you if this light comes on while you're driving? For those of you taking driving lessons, this is your handbrake light. So that's the handbrake light that comes up on the dashboard. So you're looking for something to do brakes on this one. Um, that's why I say look at the images first, because sometimes you will get clues from the image. Um, the engine oil is low. No, a fault in the braking system. Handbrake, braking system, possible. A rear light has failed, no. Your seatbelt isn't fastened, no. So it's going to be this one. As I said, there's a connection between the handbrake and braking system. If you're involved in a collision, what will reduce the risk of neck injury? Okay. A collapsible, a collapsible steering wheel, no. A properly adjusted head restraint, yes. That's what head restraints are for, to stop you from getting whiplash. An air sprung seat, no. Anti-lock brakes, no. What's most likely to waste fuel? The key word there is most likely to waste fuel. Reducing your speed, no. Under inflated tyres, in other words, flat tyres, it means your car's going to work harder, which means you're burning more fuel unnecessarily. That's where the waste comes in. This is the common answer in the classroom driving the motorways. If you have to get from A to B and you have to use a motorway, you're not wasting fuel because you have to be doing it to get to your destination. But driving with flat tyres or under inflated tyres is a waste because your tyres shouldn't be flat. Using different brands of fuel, again, no. 
What makes your tires illegal? Okay. If they have different tread patterns, no. If they were if they were bought secondhand, no. If they have any large deep cuts in the sidewall, yes. The legal requirements for your tires is 1.6 millimeter tread depth, no cuts, bulges, rips, or tears in the tire wall. So it's this one. If they if they are of different makes, again, no. You plan your route before starting the journey. Why should you also plan an alternative route? And just in case there's road closures, um, so you're just aware, I have plan A, plan B. Um, your original your original route may be blocked, so that's a possible. Your maps may have different scales, no. You may find you have to pay a congestion charge, no. You may get held up by a tractor, again, no. Yeah, always when you're planning a route, long distances, have a plan A and a plan B, just in case. Why should you be cautious when going past this bus wait and the bus stop? Again, look at the images. Um, pedestrians, not pedestrians. Well, yeah, it's pedestrians. People come off the bus because uh, they can cross in front. There's a zebra crossing the head. No, the road surface would be slippery. No, people may cross the road in front of it. In front of it. They must be talking about the bus on that one. So that's a possible there are driveways on the left. And again, no. It's going to be, yeah, because when people get off the bus, sometimes they just step in front of the bus. So you've got to be aware when you're passing. You want to turn left at this junction. What should you do if your view of the main road is restricted? This is similar to the question before where we had the question, but no images. And again, if you look at the image, um, taking information you can't see clearly to the left on this one so let's read the question again you want to turn left at this junction what should you do if your view of the main road is restricted is restricted stop and apply the parking brake even if the road's clear you don't have to use a handbrake or in this case parking brake so that makes no sense stay well back and wait to see if anything comes you're staying well back so it's going to be harder to see so no approach slowly and edge out until you can see more clearly Keyword there's approach slowly and edge out until you can see more clearly. So it's possible. Build up your speed so build up your speed so that you can emerge quickly. Again, you've got quickly in the answer. There's going to be no on that one. What can seriously reduce your ability to concentrate? So the keyword there's seriously reduce your ability to concentrate. Drugs. That's seriously reduce your ability to concentrate. Busy roads, no. Tinted windows, no. Yeah, it's going to be drugs. Um, and sometimes when they talk about drugs, they don't, um, it's not necessarily illegal drugs because the theory tests about safety and control. They don't always talk about illegal drugs. They're talking about medication and tablets that you could be on because some medications make you drowsy. So that's what they're talking about when they say drugs. What should you do if you think the driver of the vehicle in front has forgotten to cancel their right indicator? Flash your headlights to let the driver. No. Stay behind and don't overtake. That's the safest option. Sound your horn before, before overtaking. No. Overtake on the left if there's room. Again, no. Stay behind and don't overtake. If you don't know if he's cancelled the signal or not, or forgotten to cancel the signal, Lord, stay behind. That's the safest option. You're driving towards this left-hand bend. What dangers should you be anticipating? So again, if you look at the image... There's no pavement and it's like a country lane. So you're looking at pedestrians walking in the road. Um, the road getting narrower. Again, that's the common answer in the classroom because they literally take the images. The base on the image is going to always look narrow, but you're driving. It's because there's no pavement. Pedestrians walking towards you. Um, that's another theory test question as well. Pedestrians walking in the road on the country lane where you should be walking on the driver's left or right. It's always on the driver's left and walking towards the driver so they could be seen. A vehicle overtaking you, no. Mud on the road, no. What does this sign mean? 95% of red circles are no's. If you haven't seen my road and traffic signs, I'll suggest you check that one out. And this is no stopping. With the red on top, red at the bottom and the white in the middle, that's no no stopping. So you can't say no stopping. It's no entry so no parking no through road 
no road markings, no entry, not no stopping, no entry. Who has priority when traffic lights are out of order? The answer to that is nobody. Nobody has priority. If the traffic lights aren't working, so free for all. Um, traffic turning right, no. Traffic going straight on, no. Traffic turning left, no. Nobody is the correct answer. What does this sign mean? 10%. Now, if you're not sure with this, I always say read the sign from left to right. That's how we read. So if it's going up, it's going to be um, steep hill upwards. And because it's going down as we're going from left to right, it's steep hill downwards. Um, steep hill upwards, no. Adverse camber, no. Steep hill downwards, yes. And uneven road, no. Which sign means turn left ahead? So you've got this one pointing left. So that's a no. This one straight and left. That's a yes. Stay left. Pass either side to get to the same destination. So it's this one. B. In the mock test, I got one question wrong. I thought it was the one about towing the trailers where you take professional training, but I knew I clicked the right answer. So when I rewatched the video, I realized it was question 46. It was road signs. Let me show it to you. It was this question, which signs means turn left ahead. In the video, I ticked B. It's actually A. A is turn left. B is you must turn left. A subtle difference. Easy to make the mistake, I made it. That's why I say, read the questions carefully. Look at the images carefully. So I made the rookie mistake of just looking and clicking. So hopefully you guys got it right. Didn't make the same mistake as me. So you're back on track. Keep watching the video. What does this sign mean? It's crossed out, so traffic lights aren't working, traffic lights out of order. Depending on how they want to word it. Amber signal out of order, no. Traffic lights out of order, yes. New traffic lights ahead, no. Temporary traffic lights ahead, no. So with the case study videos, always watch the videos, but sometimes it can be misleading. I have done a video on all the case studies as well. So... Um, go off and watch that one um, to get some more hints and tips along the way for that. Okay, so the question. Why has the bus driver positioned the bus on the left? The sign on the road is directing traffic to keep left. No. To get a better view of the roundabout. No. In case the pedestrian wants to get on the bus. No. The bus needs extra room to get round and round back. That's the reason. That's the reason. Um, buses, lorries need to swing to get round any particular situation. Why does the cyclist take the longer route around the roundabout? The cyclist will choose the safest route for them. They won't always choose the same route as a car um, for safety reasons. Um, but let's see what they gave, gave us. Cyclists may keep to the left for safety. Got safety in the answer. So I'll kick, click that as a possible. It's easier to give arm signals while you're on the left. No. To avoid being dazzled by the sun. No. The cyclist is riding into a one-way street. No, it's going to be that one. So the cyclist could be left or right, but they would choose the safest option for them. And because it's got the keyword safety, that's the reason why I'm clicking that. What do the yellow lines along the edge of the road mean? So let me just bring that back into place so you know what they're talking about. So it's that. They're talking about the double yellows on this one. So they're talking about this. So the question, what do the yellow lines along the edge of the road mean? They mark the edge of the road. No, that'd be white. No waiting. That's a possible. Because it's double yellows. Pedestrians shouldn't cross with our yellow lines. No, and they are rumble strips. We know that's not true. Um, so it's going to be that one. So let's review. Let's review the flagged one. How will a school crossing patrol signal to stop? By displaying a stop sign by giving you an arm signal. They can do both. I've seen them do both, but again, I'll do, as I said with the theory test, don't make it personal, by the way. So I'm going to go for the sign um, because it's clearer. 
which makes it safer. So I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to unflag that. So it seems like I got one wrong there. It says take professional training, but I'm sure that's the one I said the answer was. I think I clicked pass a special driving test. And that's the reason, that's how easy it is to make a mistake by clicking, even though I knew the answer was take professional training. So you can rewind the video. I did say take professional training, but I think I've clicked pass a special driving test, but makes no difference. I got 49 out of 50, which means I would have passed the theory test. So it's come out of that. And now let's go into the has perception. So remember I'm looking for anything that's going to cause me a problem slow down or change direction and remember to do a two click method so at this point in time there's a crossroads i don't see anything there there's a bend coming up oh the car's actually turning off so it makes no difference about the bend so i'm going to click there because i can't see the car going in and the lorry i think i messed that one totally up because it's hard for me to see on this particular screen never mind remember you've got to average at least a three on every clip anyway so i can always bring my average up by getting fours and fives hopefully i get a nice eight or nine on my double hazards again i can't see around the bend so i'm going to click on that and i still can't see nothing else on here So I move on to the next one. God, this is hard to see. I will add the CGI ones. Um, uh, they're sorry, the real test is all CGI's and a lot clearer. And so if it's on a bigger screen when you're doing it, um, I'm really struggling to find see stuff on this video. Oh, I think there's a cyclist there. I'm gonna have to click again. Um, because I can't see <clears throat> but as I mentioned uh, in my previous videos if you have seen them um, if you click on things that exist it won't be too many clicks but if you click on things that don't exist then um, you can't have too many clicks on here and again I can't really see what's going on in this video it's going to be interesting what my score is at the end of this I'm struggling to see Um, I think there's two videos I've done too badly on. Um, okay, let's see if we can get a five or a four on this one. Car door opening. We've got pedestrians in the road. Again, pedestrians again. Got more pedestrians. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to give me clicks in an unacceptable manner on this one. I feel like that's way too many clicks. Well, I'm clicking on things that exist, so I'm taking my own advice. Car come in. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see how this one goes. I'm in the right hand lane. Why is he staying so far back? Interesting. I'm still scanning because I'm not understanding why the car is so far back, but I'm still scanning from left to right, right to left as I'm watching the video. The van and the car. That's a bus. Again, I'm still scanning from left to right, right to left, pedestrian. Wow, I think I've really messed up on this video here. But anyway, 
Let's see what score I got. Okay. Again, scanning. Show with the ball. I think I left that bit low. I could have done that bit earlier. Number one. <laughs> Interesting. I am really struggling to see what's going on. Cars parks over there. Nothing coming my way. Look into the bend. Still don't see anything. Okay. So again, when you're watching the video, try to go from left to right. Right, so that's where signs are normally and any dangers rather than just watching straight ahead. Also, when you're driving, on your driving lessons, that's how you want to be driving, like speed limit sign there, for example. Right, the lorry's pulling back. There's also an indicator there. I'm going to go again, just in case. He's now changing lanes. That's got to be the hazard, surely. Cars coming on, so he's got to go in the left hand lane first. He's coming off. So, to be honest, it's kind of nerve wracking doing this. Um, or well, it's not live, but it's pre recorded. Um, it's actually nerve wracking doing this. I know how you guys feel in a real test. Okay, again, scanning from this. I'm in the left hand lane at this point in time. I've got a right hand lane. No U turns. Speed limit. Road narrows, two way road ahead. Cyclist. Again, still scanning from left to right, right to left. Don't see anything else in the distance. Right. Narrow streets, cars parked up. Again, someone's in the road. Let me click on that. Let me click again because I just don't know the timing. Remember, the videos is about getting a score. It's not necessarily about seeing the hazard. You've got to get the score between the five and the one. But ideally, like I say, you want to get three on every average, at least three on every clip. So between three and five. So it's not necessarily seeing the hazard. It's literally trying to get the score within the countdown timer. That's the key to the hazard perception. Because you can see the hazard, but get a zero because it's too early. Again, I'm scanning. I can't see anything. Still can't see nothing ahead. Wow. Had to be the cyclist then. Again, hopefully this is coming clear on screen because I'm. It's, trust me, I'm struggling to see it. There's something in the distance. So two clicks. A little bit close. I'm going to click again. Make sure I get a score. But I will stress again on the day of your test when it's going for the real test. The it's all CGI's. Um, so it's a lot clearer, it's a lot sharper, and it's a little bit slower than what I'm doing at the moment as well. Let me 
click on it. I don't even know what that is because I'm just clicking because I can't see for sure. It's, a, it's just road signs. And again, I stress if you're clicking on things that exist, um, it won't be too many clicks. Again, scanning. Look well ahead as well. So that's where I'm looking at the moment and then we'll work my way back to where I am. God, I don't see any danger at the moment. That's got slow on the floor, so why is it telling me slow? Sharp bend and traffic lights. There's nobody in traffic lights. Interesting. Again, it's got slow on the floor, so why is it telling me to go slow? There is parked up. Pedestrian. I think that's a well late. If I pass this has perception, I'd be shocked. And I'm not going to re-record it either. Whatever score I get, I get. You like can see this. Scanning ahead, zebra crossing, but there's nobody there. The van's parked somewhere. It's not going to cause me an issue. Road's wide enough for both of us to fit. Cars parked up, so I'm going to click on that. The car's coming towards me. And again, I'm going to click again, just in case. That's the one that's caused me to slow down. So maybe this is a double, because this is kind of early in the video. So I've got to keep looking at just in case there's another hazard somewhere along the line. Car's just pulled out. There's a coach up ahead or lorry, something like that. Wow. Again, scanning ahead. Cars are parked up on the left, but the road's wide enough for both of us to fit. So no need to click. There's a roundabout. Give way to my right, so there's no problem. Pedestrian cyclist there, so I click on the cyclist. I'm not sure if you're going to stop. Again, scanning. Is that car coming out the side road? There's a car coming out there. Two clicks. Police. One. Two. Let's just turn to red. She's crossing. That's a bit of police car, surely, but I'm not 100% sure I've got it in the, in the countdown window. Wow, this is even harder to see. Right, uh, car looking to come out. Boom. Two. Scanning. It's got road signs, what's it saying? Slow down, pedestrians. Okay, so I need to slow down again. So traffic ahead. That's causing me to slow down. Remember, you're looking for anything that's going to cause you to slow down or change direction. So I'm actually trying to look ahead at this precise moment, not just watching the car behind. That's a roundabout. You give way to your right, so it shouldn't be an issue with that. How's a car going to come out there? Pedestrians. Is that a zebra crossing? I can't see. I'm going to click on something I can't see. He's turning. Is that a zebra crossing? Again, up here, boy. It's washed out. I can't see here either. Um... Click. So I've got to slow down tight space. It's a 
Steve Boy line. <laughs> I've got the clue for the Steve Boy line to get myself slumped down there. Mm. Well, at crossroads. So I'll start looking for this crossroads just in case. two lanes as well so i'm in the left hand lane so this is the end of the theory test so the pass mark is 86 percent. i don't do percentages so it's 49 out of 50 that's the question like i said i got wrong if you watch the video i did say take professional training but i must have clicked the wrong one that's how easy it is on the theory test i do know that from my pupils feedback sometimes they do click the wrong answer even though they're saying the right answer so sometimes double check what you're clicking but I like I said, if you go in there with a solid knowledge, like I did, clicking one or two wrong, I'm still going to pass easily. So it's not a big deal. Um, this is a breakdown of the questions um, that I've got. And I always say, especially for those who just watched the videos that failed the theory test, I always say, restudy the categories. The categories are 14 categories. And the quest, the 50 questions is made up of the 14 categories. So if you look at the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 categories. The case studies, it's open questions. And as you can see, you get a breakdown here. So I've got five safety in your vehicle five hazard and awareness and i'll just bring this one up so you guys can see it four out of five road and traffic signs okay and these are the biggest categories that's 5 10 19 sorry 5 10 14 questions out of the biggest categories and that's why i say study each category in turn to make sure your knowledge is solid and then move on to mock test because you don't know what combination of the 14 categories you're going to get has perception <laughs> well, that's really bad 48 out of 75 if i'm taking my theory test and i get 48 i'm passing because you need 44 out of 75 but for me that's personally that's bad as far as i'm concerned anyway I personally um but the video is really poor and i'm doing it on the desktop app i'm not doing it on the um the ipad app so it's still the driving test access app but I'm doing it on desktop so it comes better uh, better on video. It comes across better on video, if I get my words out. Um, but you can see where the breakdown, three out of five, four out of five. Remember, you need to average at least three across the board. Four out of five, five out of five, zero out of five on that one. Let's just take a review on that quickly. Yeah, I missed it completely. So let me pause it here. That's where it was. But like in this video, I can't see anything. This is where I clicked the first one. Let me get that out of the way. Um, and that's the first, that's where I can see the child. I couldn't see him before. Let me just rewind it back so you guys can see. I couldn't see on the video. You, on screen, you probably can. On my screen, I can't. So I clicked when I first saw it, but poor quality. But again, I will stress... Um, on the real test, it's going to be a lot clearer, a lot sharper for you guys. Let me, where, where was that one? Zero out of five, five out of five, three out of five, five out of five, five out of five, three out of five, five out of five, three out of five. I've got another, on my double, that's really poor, four out of 10. So to average at least three in every clip, I'm a minus two, because ideally I want six out of 10 minimum on my double, ideally eight or a nine, but that's poor zero out of five again let's take a look at that to see what i got zero um let's bring it forwards play that like must have been him like, to be honest that didn't even look like a hazard let's just do that again it's moving on don't look like a hazard to be fair i don't see me sliding down in the video on that one but it is what it is so you've seen it live. Well, not live, but on pre-record. 
and two out of five. So that's the breakdown of the theory test. So you've seen me do a full 50 question mock test and you see me doing the hazard perception. As I said, I'm leaving the hazard perception there. So for me personally, that's a poor score, but I'm not going to make excuses. I couldn't see it, but such is life. But remember on the videos, you are looking for anything that's going to cause you to slow down or change direction. I will stress, don't freak out if you watch this video, you've never done a theory test before. On the real test, it's a lot clearer. It's a lot sharper. They're all CGI's. All those clips was real life clips. And it's a little bit slower on the day. And I can't tell you when last one of my pupils have failed that has a perception questions. Yeah, I got a 92% pass rate as it stands um, at this precise moment. And I'm running two branches as well. So I got 92% across the board. The theory test is about understanding the questions, understanding the answers. And that's why I stress, read, the, do the categories individually and then work your way up to the 50 question mock test. So hopefully you got some value from that. Remember, if you are looking for help to pass your theory test and you don't mind being filmed, send me a message via email, info at drivingtheoryuk.com and give me some history, some background to your studying, some content so I know what I'm working with and I will phone you or email you to arrange a mutual time so we can do some recording sessions. Remember, it is ongoing until you pass your theory test. It's not just one session and then that's it. I'm leaving you to your own devices. I'm going to help you until you pass because I'm on a mission to help as many people pass their theory test and by the video series, which I'll call in Learner's Corner, going out so other people can see it, hopefully it will inspire and motivate other people to do their theory test this year. YouTube's going to show you a video here. I'm going to show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you. And I'll catch you in that video.